Hey boys and girls, I'm Dino Pinch. You're in my handyman zone. Today's video is going to be how to get great results using our old rattle can spray paint. General tip, the major brand spray paints they're selling at the home centers and hardware stores is really some fabulous stuff. Often the dry time is like 12 minutes in between coats. Wide variety of colors and finishes. Whether it's a hammered metal finish or a smooth gloss or flat, semi-gloss, clear, not all aerosol spray paints are as good a quality as the next. So pick yourself a good name brand with the right color and finish that you want. Whatever brand you choose, it's probably a good idea to stick with that brand through your project. Pick brand A color, get brand A primer get brand a clear coat and and go with that product line good idea think you need one can to finish your project buy two you could always return the second can it's better than running out mid project yes you should always use a primer primers are designed to stick to the project surface and give a nice base coat for the top coat to stick to the primer which is sticking to the project it all follows a logical progression. Probably won't need as much primer as you will top coats or color coats, whatever you want to call them. Keep in mind the primer's color in relation to the final project's color. This project we're doing, this metal cabinet, is going to be a light beige off-white color. So we picked a white primer, also comes in gray, uh, like a red rust colored, and black. So if you were going to finish the project in a black paint, you would get a black primer. If you were going to finish it in like a red paint, you would get the rust colored primer. If you were going to finish it in blue or green or whatever, you would get the gray primer. And if you were going for a light white, off white, white primer. Think ahead, get the right primer, follow through. Never try to cover your project with just one heavy coat of paint. It's always better to put three or four light coats than one big heavy coat. Because the chance of drips and run, trying to lay on a heavy coat, should you do get a drip. In which case, if I was spraying a, su a surface and I noticed all of a sudden I had put too much paint on and I started getting a drip, let the drip dry, let the project dry, come back the next day with some 220 grit sandpaper and sand out your drip. Grassing up to 320 grit and, uh, and then starting from that point again if you had sanded through to bare metal getting your drip out you got to put more primer on that spot not the whole project just that spot and then start with your top coat according to manufacturer's recommendations this time light coats as not to create a drip also very important to read and understand the manufacturer's recommendations on the can as far as shake time, as far as uh, distance from project to spray, as far as temperature, uh, the ambient temperature in relation to your project. I'm in my garage, which is sheltered from the wind because it's a bit breezy out today. And yet I have the big overhead door open so I get good ventilation in here. If it wasn't so windy out, I would take the whole project right outside there in the driveway and do it there. The spray primer and spray paint is some crazy chemicals. They put some like unknown substances in there. There's like toluene and acetone and hexane and all kinds of organic solvents in there. Definitely don't want to expose your family to it if work in a well-ventilated area. Again, those instructions are on the can. You're also going to want to have a good dust mask. And not those cheapy ones, you're going to want to have like a good one. Safety glasses, and you're also going to want to make sure like your wife's car is not too close to where you're working. Because the clouds of this stuff that don't end up on your project, they call that overspray. It'll drift past your project, and of course it'll land all over you. And, and then you'll spend the next three days compounding the overspray off your wife's car. And get all the stuff that could possibly be damaged by overspray out of the way. Make sure your work is up. I've got my project up a comfortable working height because I don't want to be stooping over and crawling around on the floor with a can of spray paint. I'd rather raise the project up and work comfortably. So if you have small pieces you can fashion a coat hanger or a piece of wire into a hanger for your small pieces and spray them so they're not sitting on a piece of cardboard where they're going to get stuck as they dry. The special rust primer we use happens to have this really dark red color. 
So the plan now is to prime the, uh, the red uh, to slowly cover it. It's not going to get covered in one coat. It, but it may be two, maybe three coats before we can start top coating it. So thinking ahead, as I told you, you're going to want to paint the top first. If we painted a side first and then tried to tilt it to paint the top, because I'm certainly not going to try to paint the top like this. That's crazy. I want it. Like I said, I raised it up so it's a comfortable work height. I want the top face in me. So if we tilt it, got a piece of scrap wood. Now I'll get this front edge off the table. Great, now we have a comfortable work height. We can spray the top and then turn it up and get the, the red that's on the side. Never apply a second coat until the first coat is dry. Don't try pushing your dry times. Most of this modern uh, spray paint is uh, fast dry. This dries in 10 minutes or less for recoating. So why would I want to push it and try recoating it in five minutes? When we have a new can of spray paint, we're going to want to shake it, shake it, and shake it some more. We're going to want to shake it for at least like two minutes vigorously. Because it's a new can of spray paint, there won't be any paint in the tube that runs up the inside of the can and the nozzle. So if I started like with a brand new can, started trying to paint, the first like three or four seconds it's going to be sputtering and spitting like whatever uh, solvent they send it from the factory pre-charged uh, with uh, up the tube with it's not going to be paint it's not going to be a pigmented paint i'm basically going to sputter some some unknown substances out on my work after shaking and when you're all prepped and ready to paint you want to go away from your work onto a piece of scrap and depress the button until you get a solid flow of pigmented color coming out. Hmm, smart idea, right? When you're finished with your painting, with your coat, you put a coat on, you're finished, don't just sit the, sand, the can aside and come back tomorrow, pick it up and expect it to spray because the paint is gonna dry in the little nozzle and clog it up. So what you do is when you're finished with your coat, you turn the can upside down, push the button, five or six seconds you're going to see paint coming out and all of a sudden the paint's going to stop coming out and you're just going to hear of the propellant. That means you have cleaned out your tube and your nozzle and now you're just getting gas. So now you can sit your can even for months and it, when you come back the nozzle is going to be clear. Another idea about the nozzles and I often do this is I'll have a bucket or a cup or something and I'll put a little paint thinner in it, and when I'm done and I blow it out, upside down blow it out, I'll take the nozzle off the can and I'll put it in the half an inch of uh, paint thinner that I put in the bucket. If you're not that confident with your spray painting abilities, you wouldn't want to start on like the top of a cabinet with as the first thing you're going to paint. Maybe you would want to open the cabinet and start start spraying something in, inside or underneath where no one, or in the back where no one's going to see until you get a feel for this whole spray painting thing. Then move on to the more visible surfaces. Before applying any primer or paint, make sure you have done all your surface preparation. All your sanding, all your wiping with a tack cloth, all your wiping with a, a paint thinner soaked rag to all the dust, all the debris, all your table, your work area, there should be no sawdust, the little things that could get blown by the spray can up into your paint. Have everything in place. Think, think through the steps before you start actually applying the paint. And then your project's going to go really nice and with really nice professional results as a result of you thinking ahead. Let's talk about actually applying the paint and how you're going to move your arm. Let me show you a couple of tips on that. We're wiping with our paint thinner. And this is to get any final dust or whatever contaminants off the surface. And moving on to our top coat. And humidity below 
They want you to shake the can for one to two minutes after the ball starts rattling. I had shaken it for one or two minutes. I'm just gonna get on with it. Now I'm not actually gonna spray it. I just wanna show you a couple of tips. This is a, a, a handle, a spray can handle. I bought these uh, maybe seven or eight years ago for like $2 each. They still sell them at the home centers, hardware stores, paint stores, decorating centers. They still sell them for like $2 each. You slip it inside here, okay? And then push the back down. It locks in there. And I don't know if you've ever done a big spray painting project. Holding this button down to like spray a whole can or two cans of paint, your finger really starts to hurt right at the tip. Plus it's a little uncomfortable, the wrist position of holding the can uh, vertical and your arm, but your hand has to be way up. This pistol grip sets your hand in a more comfortable position. I'm gonna start painting. I'm gonna blow the new can until I start getting pigmented color out. Then I'm gonna start right at the bottom. I'm gonna hold the can about 12 inches away from the surface area that we're painting. And I'm not gonna fan. That's when you use your wrist back and forth like this, it's called fanning. I'm not gonna do that. That is bad. That's gonna get you bad results. I'm gonna move my arm and I'm always going to keep the can pointed straight at the work, 12 inches away, and making passes like that, moving my arm, not my wrist. I'm going to stop with my finger when I get to the end, and then on my return, I'm going to start again. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. You'll see when I actually do painting. but you get a better result than if you just hold the button down and go to the end and then come back and then just keep, you get a lot of overspray, a lot of waste that way. So again, no fanning with the wrist. Use your arm and we're going to go like in one inch increments. Whatever the spray pattern is covering, it, whatever brand of paint you have and whatever nozzle they have, whatever the the spray can is covering we're going to jump up like a half a cover and come across and jump up a half and come across and jump up a half and come across and we're going to progressively work our way up the piece light coats no fanning and always keeping the same distance and until we get to the top and finish up a lot of it depends on feel because the different manufacturers have different nozzles on their cans and uh, some might put out like a fan pattern, some might put out like a cone pattern. Um, so you got to see what, uh, what's coming out of the can. So goes your primer, so goes your top coat. I'm showing you and I'm using my primer as an example. But the exact same procedures, steps, and methods of applying paint is the same as applying your primer. Don't let that confuse you. So goes your primer, so goes your finish coat. Treat it all with respect, do all your thinking, all your prep work, all your cleaning before you start. I want you to watch my hand position, distance from the work, and how I stop the spray and start on, on each over, uh, on, as I reach each end of, of the work. I want you to watch how the paint's laying out and how I just continue up and I don't go back to like if I missed a spot because I'll get that on the next coat. Going back is and trying to get something that you missed is a sure way to get a drip or run right in the middle of your work. Make sure my pistol grip lines up so the the nozzle is pointing straight, not at a little angle or something, but straight ahead. I'm going to clear my can like I told you until I get some good solid paint coming out. Now this looks like a fan pattern coming out. The top, from the top it's skinny, from the side it's more of a fan. So different companies have different nozzles and they'll shoot the paint different ways. But let's start. So I start in the open here and as I move the can I'll start applying paint. And when I get to the end I'll stop and when I come back the other way I'll start again. I want you to pay attention to that. And you can see this white is barely covering this red on the first coat. But we're going to do another coat or two to get this red calmed down. And you can see as I reach the ends, I'm stopping and starting. 
and I'm not fanning, I'm using my arm, not my wrist, and I'm overlapping and continuing on, even though I may have missed some spots, I'm continuing on with a light coat. We're not trying to put it all on at once. And I'm maintaining my distance that I started all the way up to the end of the piece. All right, that's that surface. The red is a really vivid, bright, a bright red primer, and it's not going to get covered in one coat with this white. And I, it's in my head, I know that. I, we're going to come back and give it multiple coats. At this point, I'm going to set my paint aside. Carefully going to reposition, because this is still wet, tacky, for 12 minute dry time. I'm going to reposition the work so I can get some paint on the sides. Without messing up what I already did. Now this side just has some spotty areas of the red. So I'm probably, the plan is to just spot these with the white. But maybe the second and third coat, I'm going to do the whole side with the white. But right now I just want to get some white pigment on top of this red stuff to start hiding that color. So again, I'm going to clear the can. There's a beetle on my work. Okay. Okay, and again, I'm st stopping and starting. I'm not, I'm not just blowing my paint into the into space in a wasteful manner. Now we're gonna get this. Stopping and starting. Just continuing, never going back, continuing. I think you're getting the idea. Now, if I was finished now, as I was telling you before, I would turn the can upside down and depress it until the paint stops coming out and I just hear the hiss of the air to clear my nozzle. So watch this. See that? Now the nozzle's clear. Now I can set this down and come back months later and my nozzle won't be clogged. So you've seen me put a light coat, and it's always light coats, on a big surface area with the proper preparation, proper thinking ahead, and the proper procedures. Keep your same methods through your project. Don't rush it, don't put on too heavy a coat, and always think ahead to the next step. So look, thanks for watching. I hope I helped you out and uh, get you on your way to being a really good spray painter. As long as you're here watching my video, sub to my handyman zone. This is my channel. All I do is fix stuff, product review, and help people out with, with the methods and the procedures to get things done. Like the video if you want, and don't be afraid to share it with your friends on the social media. See you later, YouTube.